Today, I'm comparing my Apple 5K Studio Display against LG's 5K Ultra Fine Display. What's happening, everybody? It is Andrew here from Apple Insider. You can find me on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. If you haven't done so already, please go ahead and hit subscribe and smash that notification icon so you don't miss a single video. This has been a long time coming and I'm pretty excited because I am comparing my Apple Studio Display, which is a 27 inch 5K display, against your only real 5K alternative, the 5K 27 inch LG UltraFine. Now there are several LG UltraFine displays out there, but we're looking at the 5K one in this video. If you have any doubts, there are links below to the models that I am looking at. So just use that if it's at all helpful. Otherwise, we're gonna go throughout this video. I have chapter markers so you can use those to skip to the sections that you care about. Let's go ahead and dive in a little closer. Starting off, let's look at the panels inside of these displays. Now each of them, again, are 27 inch 5K panels, which means they have a resolution of 5120 by 2880. On top of that, they're remarkably similar in other ways. For example, they each support Apple's True Tone technology to automatically adjust the temperature, the color temperature of the display based on the room it's in. It's really useful for just average people using the display, though it can be a pain for those who are trying to use it as a reference monitor. But again, there are much more expensive reference monitors out there. Apple's Pro Display XDR, third-party options, a lot of people are not shopping at the below $2,000 as an actual studio quality reference monitor. But True Tone is a really nice feature to have just to ease your eyes as you look at a display for hours on end. They do differ a little bit in terms of brightness. The LG 5K UltraFine only has 500 nits of peak brightness, where Apple's can reach about 600 nits. So Apple's is a bit of a brighter display. If I could interject for just a moment, do you want to experience twice as fast load times in Safari on your iPhone, iPad, and Mac? Then download Magic Lasso Adblock, the ad blocker designed for you. It's easy to use, can even block YouTube ads, and can double the speed at which Safari loads. Thank you to Magic Lasso for sponsoring this video. Magic Lasso is an efficient, high performance, and free ad blocker. With over 4,000 five-star reviews, it is simply the best Safari ad blocker for your iPhone, iPad, and Mac. It blocks all intrusive ads, trackers, and annoyances, letting you experience a faster, cleaner, and more secure web browsing experience. And unlike some other ad blockers, Magic Lasso respects your privacy and doesn't accept payments from advertisers. The app also now blocks over 10 types of YouTube ads, including all video ads and pop-up banner ads. So join over 200,000 users and download Magic Lasso Adblock for free from the App Store or via www.magiclasso.co. As a special thank you to Apple Insider viewers, if you use the link down below in the description or pinned in the comments, you will get one month of free access to all of the app's Pro features. Thank you again to Magic Lasso Adblock for sponsoring this video. Now, let's get back to our main content. Moving to the design of these two displays. I find this particularly interesting. See, what happened was Apple had its old Thunderbolt display and it was time for a replacement, but Apple decided to get out of the display market. So they discontinued the Thunderbolt display and then sometime later, LG announced the UltraFine displays that Apple went on the record saying they helped design and create these UltraFine monitors. And the goal was to make a great monitor that worked with the Mac. They were sold in Apple stores and they had nice macOS integrations. We saw this with True Tone, as I mentioned, and they have the ability to control the brightness with the function keys without any additional hardware or software to make it happen. So because of that, you would expect there to be some glorious design to these monitors that felt very Apple, Apple-esque. But in my opinion, that's not the case. They still look like something you'd find just in an office. It's all matte black plastic, and I think it's a little wobbly if you kind of bounce around on your desk a little bit. It's just not the most aesthetically pleasing monitor out there. 
They are simple and have clean lines and they are better than most PC and manufacturer monitors, but it still was not the Apple design that me and many others had hoped for. It also has a rather large hump on his back. LG says this is where it's housing its power supply because it has an internal power supply. But Apple has an internal power supply as well on the studio display and yet there's no hump to be seen. Otherwise, they're both decent looking monitors and it's going to be up to your preference which one you prefer. Apple has a very Apple-like design that's all aluminum, edge to edge, glass on the front, and a few different stand options to go with these things. Apple also has the option to outfit the studio display with that nano texture glass to drastically cut down on glare. Both displays have the ability to move up and down as well as tilt, at least depending on which version of the studio display you choose. The basic version of the studio display just has a tilting stand equipped with it, though you can opt for the tilting and height adjustable version. That's much more in my preference version, that's what I bought. Uh, you can also opt for no added cost to get a vase amount for the Apple studio display. LG on the other hand adjusts up and down as well as tilts right out of the box. And as an added bonus, they do include a vase amount in the box. So you can simply snap that into place on the back and attach the LG 5K Ultrafine to any vase amount that you may have around. Let's talk about ports. Both of these have very similar port configurations. They're each Thunderbolt displays, meaning they can connect to your Mac or your iPad over Thunderbolt. Aside from that single Thunderbolt 3 port, there are three USB type C ports. So you can connect any of your additional accessories to those ports right on the back of your Mac. And they're even located in basically the same spot. So you can connect your mouse, your keyboard, uh, headphones, microphones, a camera, whatever it is they want to connect, you can plug in to those ports. Though the difference is the amount of data that they can handle. The LG is a little bit older at this point, so it's not surprising that the ports are a little slower than what they are on the studio display. Apple is using USB 3.1 Gen 2, whereas LG was only using USB 3.1 Gen 1. LG says they are capable of 5 gigabits per second of data, whereas Apple's go all the way up to 10 gigabits per second of data. So we have twice the speed on the USB-C ports of the studio display. Technically, Apple delivers slightly faster charging speeds. Apple can deliver up to 96 watts from its studio display to power up your Mac, which is enough to fast charge a 14-inch MacBook Pro, but it is also just 2 watts faster than what the LG is capable of being 94 watts. For Mac users, a big thing is going to be the integration with the Mac, and there's various ways that this can surface itself. I've already talked about True Tone as well as the ability to control the brightness with the function keys on both displays, but it goes further with the Apple Studio Display. And that's because Apple has the A13 Bionic chip running inside this display, which allows a ton of various integrations with macOS. We, think we see things like center stage on the built-in camera. There's the ability to use Siri hands-free. There's also spatial audio support and the ability to noise cancel the microphone on the display itself. Since I mentioned the audio, let's touch on that briefly. Apple's has a six speaker array inside of the studio display, which is capable of supporting spatial audio. They're not the best speakers in the world, but for built in monitor speakers, they're pretty awesome. If we look at the LG 5K Ultrafine, it's only a set of stereo speakers and they're honestly pretty crummy. I wouldn't want to listen to much with them. For anyone who really cares about audio, you're still going to look for a set of dedicated speakers regardless of which display you're looking at. Apple also has a three microphone array capable of also drowning out background noise when you're on a call. LG only has a basic microphone installed on its machine. For webcams, Apple says they have a 12 megapixel camera in there, which is capable of recording 1080p video. It's also an ultra wide lens, which means it can do things like center stage and follow you around while you're taking a call. LG is just using a 1080p sensor, so it's again capable of taking 1080p video. Which one's better? Here's some sample video and stills I took from both monitors. These were shot in the same situation, side by side, and you can see and judge for yourself which camera you prefer. So in the end, 
which is the better display? Which one should you buy? There's not much of a difference between the two and the displays themselves are pretty comparable. But I think Apple wins out. Despite being a few hundred dollars more, you get a brighter display, you get additional macOS features, I think overall better webcam with portrait mode and center stage baked in, you have better speakers, you have better microphones, you have all these little things that I think add up to a better experience let alone the fact that the Apple display looks great. I love the aluminum look, the stand options, all of that looks far nicer and more Apple-esque than the LG 5K Ultrafine. For me, it's worth it, but I think for most people out there, it's not a question of the LG 5K Ultrafine or the Apple Studio display. It's really, do I need a 5K panel? Because there's a lot of great 4K displays out there. And a lot of people don't need that additional resolution, that slightly higher PPI that a 5K display offers. And there's a reason there's so few 5K displays on the market. For me, I do video. I, I love having a 5K display. But I know a lot of other people that do not need it, don't care about it, and would rather save a bunch of money by getting a great 4K display. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. If you'd like to grab an LG 5K Ultrafine or Apple Studio display, there are links and deals listed down below in the description. Otherwise, stay tuned. I have so many more videos to share with you coming down the line.